I mentioned earlier about Jeremy Clarkson, who, I, listen, I get on fine with Clarkson now, but just to remind viewers, he did punch me in the head and I've got a scar here which comes up when I have a tan like I do now from his right fist. So it's not like we've been the easiest of bed... There we are. Easiest of bedfellows over the years. I've literally borne the scars of Clarkson. So I'm not going to be his greatest cheerleader in a moment of misfortune. All I would say is this, is that he could not have issued a more sincere apology than he did today. And as I've always suspected about the Woke Brigade, the moment you do that, they don't accept it. And by the way, Harry's the king of the Wokies. They just chuck it straight back in your face. And I, I mean, Tessa, we didn't discuss this, but here's my problem with it. If it can't he apologise enough? I mean, is, is there no apology uh, oh, that's did, acceptable? Did you not rummage around in the small print? It's because the Grand Tour's apparently been pulled by Amazon Prime. That apology... Well, we don't the... know. That's not been well, confirmed oh, but yet. Come on, not wake be confirmed up and yet. smell the coffee. I'd please. rather wait and Why have it confirmed. Why do you think Clarkson apologised? Why deep you down in your tippy-top? Well, do you think he should be cancelled for everything? Uh, to be honest, I think we've had quite a lot of Clarkson over the years and time to bring on a fresh lot. Yeah, I would have but no you problem. you think he should but be cancelled for that reason? He's not been cancelled. He's still plat platformed everything. Yeah, I'm you saying, were just posting about him being cancelled. But do you think he should, be, be. But no, you think think he should, should be, be cancelled? I think maybe if the Amazon Prime think it's time for them to shuffle off, then perhaps it's... Well, we don't... They, like I say, they, they have haven't confirmed that. I mean, you won't answer and, the question. Do you think he should be Well, that's a good question. I think there should be a punishment for that level of vitriol. I would like to see... And don't shoot me there. I would like to see some modification to the to the to include misogyny in those hate really? We're talking oh. on a day. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, we are. Minute, We're okay. talking on a day Tessa, when the term institutional misogyny is being tackled around in the piece. So what about all the hideously misogynistic things that Harry says in his book? Oh, not back to that. Not back to the prep school teacher whom he made laugh. Yeah. When he was no, no. eleven years old. No, no. The would one you have preferred sorry, that Harry on. Whitewash Tessa, his childhood? you've got to let me finish. I'm talking about the matron that he called ugly yeah, and greasy and didn't make the boys horny. I'm talking about the newspaper executive who he's absolutely viciously misogynist about. I'm talking about Camilla, who he calls a dangerous villain. Blah, 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 blah. No, the no. book is laced with misogyny. No, so I agree with you. Can't be one rule misogyny for one, should one be taken another. more seriously. What about he starts with himself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, would you have preferred that he pretended he was a saint at prep school and never did that cruel that wasn't my question. Lord of the Flies that wasn't my question. children do? My would you have preferred... Question. No, what Tessa, about the I didn't... Tessa, you know what about my, question, my question to you was very simple. Why should he be allowed to be a misogynist? I didn't... But anyone who dares to be a misogynist about his wife, he wants to get cancelled. I just don't think you can compare oh. the all idea right. of someone... Of course you can. ..being, being cellular liked on a cellular level, paraded down the street naked, of course. having human excrement Let me tell thrown you. at her, yeah. with describing a tabloid actually, editor as something. I don't actually, know what, what, he's, what he said about a female editor was actually pretty but well up there. was it sexist? It was just unpleasant. Even, oh, actually, it was misogynist, sexist and revolting, yeah. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. I want to talk to Stephen Bates former Guardian royal correspondent. Hey, Stephen, I didn't even know the Guardian had a royal correspondent, so that was a bit of a, a shock to me. Uh, so congratulations on, on, that, well, uh, on that title. Uh, but thank you for joining me. Look, I wanted to get you on, not because I expect let, you to launch a, a spirited, okay. full-frontal defence of tabloid newspapers, but, but I do think you raised some very interesting points in your column about all this, which is that Harry's real point of visceral hatred is that the British tabloids in particular were directly to blame for Princess Diana, his mother's death. And you wrote a column really saying that isn't born by facts. No, that's right. I mean, I watched the ITV interview uh, the other Sunday, like uh, millions of other people did. And uh, as you see, we had this riff about um, the tabloids uh, and the paparazzi causing his mother's death. That wasn't actually uh, what I discovered and found. I was the Guardian's man in Brussels at the time, and I was sent down first thing that morning to help the coverage, of course. And I got on into a cab at the Guardian Nord to go to the Guardian office. And the cabbie, this is five or six hours after the accident, said that driver must have been mad to drive into that tunnel at that speed, he said, there's a very bad camber and there's a twist in the tunnel. And uh, anyone who drives in at that sort of speed, you have to stick to 30 kilometres an hour, he said. You know, anyone who w went in at the sort of speed that car was being driven at uh, must have been mad. And we now know, after uh, the inquest, which I also covered eight years later at the High Court, um, that uh, Henri Paul, the uh, chauffeur that evening, 
was high on drink and drugs. He hadn't been expecting to work, which is why, why he was drunk, uh, and he'd never driven a Mercedes before. Mm. Uh, and Mohammed Al Fayed uh, instructed him uh, to drive uh, Dodi and Diana right across Paris, a route he didn't particularly know, in a very fast car that he wasn't used to driving. He had a Mini himself. Um, and he showed off. He was showing off to the paparazzi who were outside the Ritz Hotel. They could have stayed at the Ritz Hotel um, because they had a suite there. They were rooted out of the suite by Mohammed Al Fayed, who wanted them to stay at his apartment. And uh, that was the terrible thing that happened. And the other crucial uh, thing, I think... Versus... And the other point I was going to make, which I think is really important to this, is that Harry talks sort of vaguely about there were flashing lights as his mother... Uh, and, the, and the car she was in crashed. In fact, the paparazzi were not within one kilometre of the car when it crashed. That came out no, of the inquest. Were, they, so there were, they were none of them anywhere near that's right, the tunnel that's right. or the car. Yeah. Um, what is completely true is they, that once they caught up with the car and, it, and they realised it had crashed, then some of these ghouls did actually try and take pictures of Diana lying in the back of, of the car. Right. And that is, that is completely unforgivable. But it's not true that they were right with the car as it went into the tunnel, blinding dri the driver, potentially, with, with their flash bulbs. That's absolutely right. They were on Vespers. Vens uh, Vespers don't outrun Mercedes being driven at speed. Uh, they were behind. They were admittedly chasing the Mercedes, uh, and, um, probably trying to catch up with it at lights or something like that, but they weren't in front of it, and uh, so therefore they didn't cause... The accident, they indeed did behave like ghouls afterwards. These were continental paparazzi, it has to be said. Mm. They weren't British journalists. They weren't British photographers. They were Italians and French. Right. Uh, maybe they wanted to sell photographs to the British tabloids, but I doubt very much whether the British tabloids, which by then had learnt their lesson... Well, uh, I can tell you, well, well, I can tell you for a fact that I was in the Daily Mirror newsroom in the early hours of that morning, about 5am when we were offered pictures of Diana lying in the back of the car. Didn't know if she was dead or alive at that stage. It turned out she actually died, I think, on the way to hospital when she got to hospital. But these pictures were offered to us, and I not only refused to even countenance using them, I rang the head of the agency who'd sent them in, advised him very strongly to withdraw them from everywhere he'd sent them and to leave the country. Uh, and keep his head down uh, because it might cost him his entire business. So this idea that we were sitting there and salivating over pictures of, of Diana in the back of the car is completely untrue. There are many things you can blame the tabloids for about uh, their royal coverage of Diana and Charles and the breakup of all uh, that marriage, but that is not one of them. Uh, it seems to have embittered Harry uh, very deeply. You can understand that, but um, as I think you were saying earlier, um, it's probably time, unfortunately, that he should get over it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I would never tell anyone to get over the death of a parent and that thing, but I certainly think that him continuing to apportion direct blame on a particular section of the British media for the crash that killed his mother. It's just, unfortunately, it's not borne out by the facts. Je Jenny Bond, you were covering... The Stephen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, Jenny, you listening to all that. You were obviously uh, covering all this. Uh, I mean, it is a, to me, it's a very important point. You can have a view, as, as Harry and William both do, that the paparazzi are the enemy for them because they follow them all around at all times. And obviously, Diana got more attention than I think anybody else did. And the rules did all change after she died, actually. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the press, the British press, were to blame for her death. That's just not true. Yeah. No, it's not true, and I've never bought into the conspiracy theory whatsoever, but um, Harry seems to want to revive that. He was traumatised by what happened, however it happened, and he has not been able to get over it. And for that, that's why I say we, we have to have some, some sympathy with him. But, uh, you know, he's, in the book he suggested that he would like, and William would like, uh, to have the inquest reopened or the inquiry reopened, though he doesn't know what you gain from it. Um, obviously, that's not going to happen but I, I don't know how he will ever um be reconciled with what happened to his mother never be never mind be reconciled no well you, you have to look jenny thank you very much for joining me i mean look the bottom line and you've got to stick to facts 
The inquest was unbelievably thorough. And she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. And she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. The car was speeding. The driver was drunk and had drugs in his body. Uh, and he was basically... He lost control of the car uh, on a bump in the underpass. I mean, that's what happened. It is. But, oh, you go, go. Sorry. The one person who survived that crash was the only person who was wearing a seatbelt. I interviewed him. I had the first interview with Trevor Reese jones the bodyguard. And does he uphold Harry's version? Well, he, all he... I mean, look, he, he wore the seatbelt and that saved his life. The, yep. the others weren't wearing seatbelts. But does he, I mean, say, that, here's does, the does he say that they were trying to escape the paparazzi? No. No, no because, so because that's they, the they point weren't. I'm trying to make. The paparazzi were over a kilometre behind yeah. them. They were nowhere near the car. So it wasn't the paparazzi. And by the way, as, as Stephen rightly pointed out, these weren't British press. These were foreign paparazzi. But, but just talking about this, reliving it, even in a sort of fourth-hand version, it's horrific, it's painful. I think what we need to do is... I know this is going to be difficult for you, Piers, and perhaps you too, Anne, but is cut Harrison slack, lift ourselves above the parapet and think, what is the royal family for? It is our first family. It's a great British brand. Do we want it to look magnanimous? Do we want it to represent redemption and forgiveness? If we do, what about Piers, him? If he's yeah. not forgiving, then, yeah. we, not being then we invite them. He's to the doing Commonwealth. none of that. He's we do. doing none we do. of that. And I can tell you, the best way to do that is not to invite those yeah, two yeah, anywhere yeah. near the coronation. But thank you, Tessa. Thank you, Anne. Appreciate you coming in. I Still to come, the Brit Awards goes gender neutral to be more inclusive and with obvious predictability. All five nominees for best artists identify as men. Do gender neutral awards exclude women? We are going to have a gender neutral panel if, this two, if these two carry on. <laughs> Go on, give each no. other a hug. No, that's certainly not. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs>